Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for August 8th, 2018. And before we get started, I just want to take a moment to remind all of our new viewers, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, uh, you might want to go ahead and do so. It's down there uh, below. It says subscribe on it. You can't miss it. Uh, by doing so, you'll get uh, notified. Well, actually, by subscribing and hitting the bell icon, you'll get notified uh, when I post uh, new video updates of the current activity and what's happening uh, in Leilani Estates. So now that we covered that little bit of housekeeping, let's get on to the report, which tonight's breaking news is real simple, that there is actually no news to report because the USGS has not uh, issued a report for today uh, because they were not allowed around Fissure 8 or any of the areas because of the pending uh, dangers of Hurricane Hector. Uh, so ultimately, the breaking news tonight is that the Big Island of Hawaii was spared uh, any activity basically from H Hector. Uh, it went completely south of us. It's actually past the southern tip. Uh, I'll throw up a picture of the infrared imagery from the satellites. Um, and as you can see, uh, at this point, it doesn't look like that the Big Island is going to be affected pretty much in any significant way. Uh, we got a little bit of rain showers come through uh, in the banding, which is typical of, of storms like this, uh, but maybe one or two. Um, and it's just been overcast mostly all day. So uh, a little wet, a little humid, a little on the warm side, surprisingly. Um, but I guess that's because it must have pushed, you know, air up from the, the south on us. So when the winds do come from the south, they, they do get warmer and a little bit more humid. So that's basically the, the breaking news for tonight. Uh, I am going to go ahead and recap yesterday's update from the USGS. And they were nice enough to actually provide some new images today, even though they weren't able to provide a report. Hmm, interesting. But uh, hey, we got pictures, so I guess that's the, the most important thing. So let's go ahead and, and get to the recap while I show you the new images. The USGS reported for Tuesday, August 7th, 2018 at 106 p.m. that activity on the lava output from Fissure 8 remains low and the morning overflight crew observed a small active lava lake within the Fissure 8 cone, a weak gas plume and a drained upper lava channel. The surface of the lava lake was about 5 to 10 meters below the spillway entrance. There was a diminishing number of small active ooze outs near the coast of Kapoho Bay and Ahalunui lobes and the lays plume was greatly diminished. Active lava remains close to Poiki boat ramp but has not advanced significantly towards it. Moving on to the Middle East Rift Zone, uh, gas measurements of Puo plume taken on Monday and Tuesday morning indicated a reduced SO2 uh, emission rate lower than the measured uh, measurement last Friday and similar to what has been observed over the past three months. Uh, no active lava was observed in the crater and the over yeah, no active lava was observed in the crater on an overflight on August 6. Moving up to the Kilauea Volcano Summit, the Volcano Summit still remains quiet following the most recent collapse event at 11.55 Hawaii Standard Time, August 2nd. This continues a significant departure from the pattern of seismicity and deformation over the past several months, with very low rates of seismicity continuing today. The deformation at the summit, as measured by tiltmeter and GPS instruments, has virtually stopped. And that's pretty much what I'm going to uh, leave the, the report at. Like I said, there, we don't really have one. So I just wanted to recap those three aspects. Again, uh, still no information on Highway 130 south of Leilani Estates. So I haven't heard anything about it. So again, we're going to logically assume that there has been no change in crack width, uh, temperature, or gas emissions at that location. And finally, wrapping up the report will be our EPA uh, air monitoring sensor report. However, again tonight, we are in the same situation as we were in last night's update. Uh, the sensor grid in our area is currently offline, and this is stated uh, as due to per preparations for potential impacts from Hurricane Hector, air monitoring and at some locations may be temporarily suspended. Uh, so they're still off basically uh probably even removed from the location to protect them from flying debris 
which is a good, of course, good preparation. I mean, we did not really know where Hector was going to go until it got here. You know, it's kind of funny. Hurricanes are a lot like a, a, a volcano. Y you never know where it's going to go until it gets there. Um, which is interesting how, how that kind of works. Uh, however, with hurricanes, we, we can predict a lot more. And uh, so Hector's missed us. We, we seem to be fine unless it decides to, to make a U-turn. Uh, I don't think the east side of the island would have to worry at, that, at this point. It will definitely be the, the west side, the Kona side. So that will basically conclude the general update for tonight. And we're going to now, of course, move over into our favorite little segment. But before we do, I have a small announcement. Okay, actually, I have a few little announcements to make. Uh, first, um, I have been told by Scott from About Hawaii Tours that he has been contacted uh, a few times with people asking, you know, how could they, they help me out. Um, I've never really given it much thought. Um, however, uh, Scott was generous enough to uh, extend to me the use of his mailing address. So if anyone, you know, wants to send me a letter or, you know, whatever, um, you can do so by using the address, which you'll find in the description. Uh, just put a note in the envelope or box or whatever uh, that it's, you know, for doing Hawaii. And uh, he will make sure that uh, I get it. And, uh, you know, I, I do appreciate it. Um, so that's the first little announcement. Uh, second little announcement. I have decided that I am going to start a Patreon account. Um, there are some other stuff that I'm doing video-wise, which, you know, are in smaller duration and, and kind of less important than the updates, but they're really cool stuff to look at. Uh, so I'm going to be posting that stuff there. Um, a good example would be uh, this map progression that I've put together uh, from the, the very beginning to what right now is current. Um, so that, that'll probably be one of the first videos that I put up on the Patreon page. Once I have that information available, I, I will present it uh, here on YouTube. Uh, however, some of the stuff that I post on Patreon, I will eventually uh, post on YouTube channel or in the video updates. Uh, I won't be stopping YouTube, so you know don't don't get worried or or anything like that. I'm still going to be putting out some great stuff here. And the last little announcement is that I have created a mongoose on watch 24 hours a day for your safety T-shirt. Uh, it will be available on Redbubble, which you can find the the link to that in the description. And uh, is this is just the first uh, rendition of it. Uh, I've got a couple other little ideas, uh, but I wanted to, you know, do this one first because it's based on the actual imagery. Um, so I hope you all like it. Uh, we'll, we'll find out here soon enough, I think. And finally, it's time for look at that there. The first image we're going to take a look at is this one right here, Fissure 8. Uh, this one was published today by the USGS, and uh, it shows the current state of the inside of the cone. And um, if you take a look at that there, we can see that uh, this elongated orifice uh, that it was erupting out of uh, is kind of in line with the uh, fissure crack uh line that goes down the map um which is kind of interesting so this this shows that it's not technically a hole that the the magma bored up through it's the crack that it came up and spilled out of which is kind of cool looking the next thing we're going to take a look at in this photo is actually the the uh the source of the lava fountains and all the lava from uh, fissure 8 cone uh, which is kind of cool to look at very close up here but what I want to point out is that there is relatively no bubbling going on the, the the majority of the surface of the lava there is pretty uh, flat and, and unwrinkled uh, not cracked or anything like that which means that the pool that we see there is actually relatively calm Okay, and the last part of this image we're going to look at is, is over here. So if you look at that there, that is the little uh, overflow pond that uh, Fissure 8 
uh, would flow into. Um, I suspect that uh, during surges, uh, it would act as kind of a, an overflow reservoir, which perhaps perhaps prevented uh, a lot of spillovers down the channel from not from actually happening. Uh, I because it, it, you know that would fill up first because it, it did have a lot of flow in and out of it. I've, I've seen other you know videos of it happening, but if you also look at the very top of it, you you also see that uh, there is some rubble on top of the the lava itself. That is the edges of it beginning to cave in uh, now that it's cooling because when it cools, it contracts and cracks and and well the edges of these things begin to turn to rubble. Uh, we, we see it all happening all down the channel actually and finally one commenter asked uh, a question uh, speculating that maybe this was actually a, a lava tube that was flowing out somewhere else um, and uh, we, we don't really know how far it go or how far back it goes in there but I don't suspect it was a lava tube or any under type of or underground type of drainage uh, because watching the videos of when the, the flow was active uh, you would see it go in and out and when it would go in the, the level would rise and then when the surging and, and flow would drop a little then you would see it begin to drain back out going with the rest of the channel if it was a lava channel we would suspect the lava to, to be going one way uh, because that's what usually keeps the, the, the tube open or excuse me when I said lava channel I meant lava tube because uh, that's what keeps the uh, lava tube open and now real quick I want to show you uh, today's image of inside the cone compared to yesterday's image of inside the cone now what we can tell by looking at these two images side by side is that the level of the lava in the uh, vent itself is actually lower a little lower today than it was yesterday the off gassing is less today than it was yesterday and of course the uh, the turmoil of the lava itself is calmer today than it was and I don't see any evidence of any major collapsing uh, structures inside the, the cone itself now that'll do it for this segment of look at that there and for this update report uh, I want to say thank you to everybody uh, for listening I do appreciate it remember if you enjoyed this video and I really do hope you did uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button it really helps me a lot and lets uh, other people know that this is good content um, also don't forget to check the links in my description and uh, on that note we will say have a great morning afternoon or evening this has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates Update for August 8, 2018.